Okay, so um, so I'm going to get the uh, AutoCAD file that we need with the uh, the drawing of your uh, what's this place actually called? I know it's on George Street in Redfern. Do you know what the building's called, or if it's got a name? Oh, okay. Oh, great. Oh, good. So it does have a name. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Great. Oh, yeah. Okay. Great. Yep. Yep. Doubtwell. Okay. Doubtwell. Right. Um, and. Uh, right. Okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Now she's gotten a few good um, buildings <laughs> like that. And um, well, it's going to be your museum of the senses, but. Uh, oh, yeah, um, in your class folder here, obviously you've got that drawing, and I mean, if you've seen this message and you're worried about it, don't be. It's just saying that it's read only. That means someone else has it open usually, and uh, yep, so that's fine. And if you get this message, um, again, usually it's fine, but it's worth knowing. Um, it means the, pro the file was created using another program, and uh, that would tell me it's probably been taken back from uh, Illustrator or something like that. Um, so the lines will be at least uh, lines you can edit though in AutoCAD, but it won't be maybe uh, perfect. You can see that's actually a spline, uh, so you get some funny things, but uh, otherwise it should be at least... Uh, oh, it's just a type of uh, object you can draw in AutoCAD. So you've got regular lines and then you've got splines which will let you do more complex curves and uh, functional curves. So uh, with the um, views I have, I want to um, use these as a reference in Revit. And to do that, I'll need to have them as separate uh, files, each view. So I'm making a window there, just going left to right to go around the things I want in my first file. Uh, so the first floor plan there, essentially, is what I want. And uh, yeah, I want the scale. Yep, that'll look. So I'm going to type W. Enter, and that's the shortcut for right block. Uh, yeah, well, see, that's the thing with, with AutoCAD. You've got all these things like excerpts and blocks, and people talk about them like they're objects, but really they're tools, they're commands, and all they do is work with drawing files. So there's no XF object, there's no block object, all you have in AutoCAD is the DWG format. Um, so in, in Revit, you've got, in ArchiCAD, you've got lots of different formats, but not AutoCAD. Uh, and so when you write a block, you're exporting a block to a drawing file. And uh, so it's a quick way of exporting. And uh, here it's got, you can see the uh, objects selected. You can see there it's telling me how many. And if I hit browse, I can choose where it goes. So I'm going to uh, just uh, choose a folder for this. And uh, I'll make a new folder there. And so I'll call this uh, ground floor. Exactly. Yep. So the origin, um, I might use uh, pick points there, just to choose a point that's uh, closer to the uh, to the plan. So I don't know where the origin is on the page here. And then insert units, I'm going to make sure are set to millimeters. That's really important. That's it. Okay. And oh, W. <coughs> so it's best if w you select enter. enter. Sorry, yeah. And so yeah, it's best if you select the objects first, <coughs> and then. Uh, because we're working in millimeters. Yeah, sorry. So um, yeah, so if I type in W, enter, and then. Now you can see it's come up with those different objects selected. Uh, otherwise, you can always just click select objects and select them afterwards. Uh, so again, here I can hit uh, browse to give uh, a new location, or I can just change the end there to give it a photo. The ba uh, base point there, again, I'm just going to make a bit... Well, that, that's where the origin is, actually, so it's not too bad uh, at 
zero zero, but uh, well, I'll just use a point anyway. Doesn't hurt. And again, insert units always millimeters. So I'll just keep doing the same thing uh, with the um, elevations. It doesn't hurt to have them as separate. And um, uh, that's the section, though, isn't it? Or yeah. And, uh, well, maybe I'll leave it at that, but I might just then open one of those files to show you what they look like. So, just go and browse to folder. You can see now they're all separate. If I go to open, there we are. So, you can always uh, copy and paste things from one file to another if you realise that you maybe wanted to have the scale and the north point in uh, one of these other files, you can easily just right click and uh, under clipboard go to copy and then you can go to any other file and then again when you right click oops, right click go to the clipboard and then paste and you can move anything one to another. So uh, that's ready to go and, uh, and use in Revit. So I'll uh, close those and uh, yes. So maybe, well, because that was fairly quick, I'll just do a really quick thing with Revit. Um, under projects, when you click new, uh, remind you, always use the architectural template. And then here, uh, a really quick way of getting started is just to, um, I've been showing you about duplicating views. Yep, so I'll do that again. So right click, duplicate the view. And here it doesn't matter which option except for dependent. So duplicate there is fine. Just, just as a tip there, I'd say just avoid duplicate as dependent. It's really confusing. So the other two so are fine. And uh, so I'll rename that view straight away. <coughs> call it ground floor with BWG. And the insert tab, uh, let's do link CAD again. I can browse to find the file. And just to be sure, uh, I can set import units to millimeters there, even though it should detect it. Current view only is the most important option. and. Uh, that way it will only show in this view, not in the other plans and the 3D view and other things. So we don't want that, especially with a, a project like this, because you'll have the first floor plan imported as well. So you don't want them to show up over the top of each other in all your views. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, because in a lot of the programs you can just bring it in and have it showing in, in everything. But, uh, not with, uh, with these. So there we are. So that's come in pretty well. And uh, so then, oh, that's just the yeah, the layers in AutoCAD. So you can separate this onto different layers. And uh, well, that would be a good thing, actually, because uh, it is uh, in the way. And so that's the thing. I was going to show you how to start drawing walls, but maybe this is better, actually. So the... Uh, Hatching there, I'll just see if we've got any layers. Nope. So I'll make a new layer. Oh, that's the exactly. Yep. And just make it a different colour. Just uh, anything. And well, I'll show you a couple of little tricks here. I'm going to select all of this just with a window. Sorry. There we are. So I'll just select the whole thing and then right click and then go to properties. You can use the filter list there to just go to hatch and then change all of those to different layers. Now, oh yeah, now the colour, let's see, the colour should be, yeah, so someone set the colour manually to white, should be on by layer and then it'll pick up the layers colour. So I just did that to all the objects. 
So I can. And why would you do that? So I've got them a different colour now. So either in AutoCAD uh, on a different layer now. So either in AutoCAD I can freeze that layer. Uh, take the hats out. Yep. Or I can just uh, save it as is with the layer still on in AutoCAD, and then in Revit, um, on the Insert tab, you've got Manage Links yeah. to reload it. So it's coming with a different layer. Yeah. And then if I don't want to see that in Revit, um, but still have it on in AutoCAD, that's not a problem because I can go to that visibility setting. And the shortcut for that is VV. But edit here, does the same thing. V yep, double V. Yep. So yeah, exactly. So double V. And that seems Click on the thing. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's good. it's good to have the view active. And uh, so then we've looked at these other categories, model and annotation categories. You've got imported categories where you'll find all the AutoCAD layers. <coughs> and so there's the wall hatch. Okay. Yeah. And so really quickly, you've got the wall tool, which I know you've all used. And so uh, does anyone know the wall? Uh, are these just 270 at the moment? Uh, they did. Four fifty. Yeah, I think four hundred. So, well, these, this one here has been drawn at four fifty. So I'll, I'll do it that size. And uh, so with the wall tool, I'm going to go to generic three hundred mil because that's close. Edit type, duplicate, and I'll call it generic four fifty mil wall edit the structure and actually change the thickness to 450. And now I could draw by clicking, but I'll set the location line to finish face exterior. Uh, I'll just leave the height. And instead of drawing by clicking with the line tool, I'm going to use pick lines uh, yeah. and just pick those AutoCAD lines mm -hmm. and straight away it'll turn them into walls. Four hundred, isn't it? Yeah. They've allowed us to keep, uh, keep the columns, but yeah. So yeah. Oh. yeah, you've got to lose the wall. We well, can lose the wall, but you've yeah. got to keep the columns. Keep yeah. The yeah. Two fifty uh, in diameter and three thousand that's the height. Yeah. Yeah. No. Would that be easy to draw on CAD first? Or on well, you've got it drawn in AutoCAD, so you'll just be chasing over it in so Revit. You can just so check the dimensions as you go, but you'll have you know you've got this drawing. Yeah, because you've already got the columns there. Yeah. Oh, they're not drawn. Okay, we'll add those in. That's easy to do. Just paste them to those. Yeah. But you need to draw a Revit or Should we do it again? Oh, Revit. Just do it in Revit. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so this wall here, I'll just quickly show you how to change the thickness of that because it's 400. So, again, edit type, duplicate, and I'll make it have a new name. So, it's really important that you do have a different type for or a different name for every size wall that you have. Might seem like extra work, but it's actually saving you work. So, uh, and here I've only got a couple of walls, but I can just show you if I go back to the ground floor that doesn't have the drawing, I can easily see what I've done in Revit without the AutoCAD stuff. Can you, can you draw that wall that is that Which part? The like edit the wall? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. So I'll do a new wall. Uh, so, again, with the wall tool, I've got the ones, uh, the last one I made. So, uh, if you remember that thickness, otherwise I'll just um, just measure that. So that one's 250. Okay, so again with the wall tool, I'll, uh, well, it doesn't matter which one I start with, I'll just go to edit type, duplicate, that's the first step. Sure. Give you a new name. Okay. And if you start, if you're using one of these generic uh, single component walls, if you go to edit for the structure, you can change the thickness just of that one component to what you want the wall to be. Ah, oh, sorry, 200, 250. That's it. And then just OK and OK. So uh, now I'll, well, I've been using pick lines to draw the walls, but it's good to see that, I mean, sometimes pick lines won't give you uh, exactly what you want, so it's uh, sometimes just as easy to draw by clicking points 
and snapping to the AutoCAD lines. That works fine. And notice I'm drawing over the windows. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah. you'll have the wall above and below the windows yeah, yeah. and the doors. Yeah. So you put the walls in first and then you come back and add the, um, the windows later. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. So um, the end thing now is I can't see the AutoCAD lines under my walls. So yeah. just to uh, finish that off, I'll set it to wireframe. I still can't see because of the hatching. So that's that's done with the coarse fill. So I'll set it to fine. Now I can see through. So it's those two two settings. And uh, yeah, so that wall needs to come back a bit as well. Using thin lines, I'll see how uh, big that gap is. So, 9.7, that's because it's not quite accurate in AutoCAD. So, you use your judgment and decide whether it makes sense to have a wall that is 9.7 mil less than this other wall, or I'd say it's more likely that um, the person doing this drawing has just been a bit inaccurate, and you can say, well, probably those walls are both 250. Um, and uh, So again, back in the other one, you can see. So hopefully that'll uh, get you started. I'll just finish that video there so it's not too long.